Welcome to Sevilla. started in Spain but I think it's fair to say there's hardly anybody here at the moment this is quite a unique experience. Yeah we booked this trip months and months and months ago long before um, the Covid-19 situation took off because it's our wedding anniversary so happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> uh, one of the things we were aware of before we booked it was that generally it's a very touristy area to come to so we were kind of prepared to be in a place where there were going to be lots of tourists around but I think it's fair to say there's a fraction of the number of people that you would expect to see yeah. here, isn't there? There's people around, but not that many, really. Um, one of the reasons for that, I think, is that the rules on masks here in Andalusia are very strict. Uh, we've taken them off very briefly just to do this intro, um, but you need to wear them everywhere you go, um, whether you can maintain the distance or not. So we've got to pop these straight back on now. We're going to take the camera around for the weekend and show you what our experience is like. Um, we're going to enjoy the, the sights, the sounds, the taste, everything that Sevilla has to offer. Built in 1928 and known as the Venice of Seville, the Plaza de España is a semicircular building with impressive towers to the north and the south. There's a 500 metre long canal which follows the curve in front of the building. Along the front wall you'll find 48 tiled alcoves with benches, each representing a different province of Spain. The impressive building has been used in many films over the years, probably most famously when it doubled up as Cairo in the film Lawrence of Arabia. We were hoping to be able to rent one of these boats and row um, around the edge, but unfortunately they are shut off and closed at the moment. But I think if we ever get a chance to come back, it's, uh, it looks like something that's definitely worth doing. But it's still absolutely amazing to be here at the moment with next to nobody here. Uh, we've never been to Sevilla before, so I, I can't imagine how busy this normally gets, but I'm sure it doesn't look like this. This is Bar Alfalfa and we've uh, seen this place on TripAdvisor, it's got really good reviews. Nice flavours. It's a great little place as well in there. Not very big time, but pretty busy. And we've gone for the Iberico ham gyoza. Um, the buffalo mozzarella and tomato. It's the alfalfa salad. Salad. Um, and that's squid. Squid. And we've ordered some pork cheeks as well, which are on their way. But yeah, delicious. <laughs> which is, I think, the largest wooden structure in the world, apparently. Um, why is it called Las Setas? It, it, well, it's another word for mushrooms, and it's mushroom-shaped, or based on mushroom-shaped, so it's, yeah. I think the story behind this is that there was a competition for a sculpture here in Sevilla, and a German engineer, his design won, which is why it looks like this. Five euros to come up here each. Uh, there was nobody in the queue uh, when we came up um, and I think there's maybe, I don't know, ten other people, would you say, on yeah. here at the minute? Not many. I think, um, I, I think, again, it's usually a lot busier than this, so we're going to take advantage of it being quiet. Yeah, I'll flip the camera around. You don't want to be seeing us in masks all the time. This is the view. It's, it's really cool, actually. It doesn't actually look like wood, initially. It 
it's more metallic, doesn't it? Yeah, it I mean, kind I mean, of. It, structure's metal. Yeah, this is metal. The railing here is metal. But I think because of the way it's painted, this initially looks metal, and then when you look closer, you actually can see it's wood. It seems to work quite well for social distancing, actually. They've not said you have to go one way, but that's kind of what it looks like. And then it goes at the top here. But actually, I've said there's 10 people, there's two other people. that we hired the scooters from. They're 10 euros for an hour, 13 euro for an hour and a half, or 16 euros for two hours. Really good place just to grab some water, even if you're not interested in renting the scooters because it's the coldest bottle we've had so far. They're right by the bridge. They've got bikes as well as scooters, really helpful. The scooters were fully charged and they were pretty nippy and dead easy to use, so it's good fun, good way to spend an hour. Yeah, really good fun. Um, you just need a photo ID of some kind, a passport or a driving licence, they just take a photo of that. Um, no security deposit or anything. And we had the water at the end, which I think was a good idea because it was ice cold. Um, really, really good fun. Yeah, definitely recommend that. Slancher. <laughs> We're in Abaceria del Postigo, which has probably got the best view of any tapas bar in Sevilla because we've got a view of the cathedral. And our first little tapas has arrived. So we've got the Iberico ham and this is sheep's, sheep's cheese. And we've gone for the traditional orange wine as well. Yeah, so, salut! Tuna tartare. It's quite a big portion, actually. But this was their. He said this was their speciality of the house. So it looks really good. We've tried to obviously show, as most YouTube videos do, obviously the highlights of our time here in Sevilla. Um, but given um, that we are in the middle of uh, the whole COVID situation, it's our first trip traveling again whilst this is going on. I think it's only fair that we kind of just run through our pros and cons and our experience of what it's like to travel at the moment. Um, so what would you say are the pros? Um... Well, we're in a very, what would normally be a very touristy city. It's been easier for us to get into some of the more popular bars and restaurants that otherwise we might have struggled with. Also, in terms of the kind of tourist sites like the Plaza de España, which again, I would imagine would normally be absolutely teeming with tourists, uh, was relatively quiet, which meant that we could walk around quite freely and also get lots of nice pictures without having lots of other people um, within those photographs so you know those are those are the pros I guess yeah um, I, I think you know we have to address some of the, the more negative sides um, here in Andalusia they have some of the most strict rules with regards to face masks so we've had to wear a mask everywhere even if you're on the street and you're you know miles away from other people you still have to wear a mask um, and the temperatures here this week weekend is is typical for this time of of the year here in Sevilla it's easily been 40 degrees sometimes a couple of degrees over that um, it's not easy and we're not going to lie and say that it's easy to walk around in those conditions wearing a face mask all of the time um, even we found it fairly challenging um, but, you know, we have to respect the rules and we fully understand why they're in place. Um, but that, that is definitely one of the more negative sides at the moment. Um, yeah. it, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not ideal, is it? No, I, I if, think we're just being I'd honest about it. Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather not if, you know, 
if we had the choice, if things were different, obviously they're not, so it's kind of irrelevant, but you know, we just have to get on with it. What we're saying is it's it's just it's not that easy and anybody that makes out that it's easy to do that in these kinds of temperatures is lying. And for us the opportunity to travel again, to try and do that safely, to support some more local businesses, um, we felt that was the right thing to do. Um, for me, um, I think we made the right decision. If I had to make that decision again, I would still travel. Would you? Yeah, me too. So I mean, same, we, we yeah. booked this before any of the, the COVID situation happened. Um, and we didn't even consider cancelling it at, no. at any point. And, and the airline didn't consider cancelling. The hotel didn't consider cancelling. So all in all, it, it felt like it was safe to come here. We felt safe the whole time. Um, I would do it again. If it was another region of Spain where perhaps it was, you know, there was more of an outbreak, perhaps Catalonia, we may have had a conversation mm. and maybe decided to postpone that. But we felt it was safe and the right thing to do. Um, we've had a great weekend. Hopefully we've captured some of it on camera to show you as well. Um, if you're interested in the whole hotel side, how, how that was handled, I'm going to put that up as a separate review for the hotel. Um, but yeah, just to say thanks again for watching and we'll see you again soon. See you soon. Bye.